Hey guys, today we're going to talk about what to do if you have ketoacidosis, okay? There's a lot of confusion on what ketoacidosis is versus ketosis. Are they the same? Sometimes people will scare you and say like, don't do ketosis because that's dangerous. What they're talking about is ketoacidosis. They have the same word keto, but ketoacidosis is very different than ketosis. So let me explain the three different types of ketoacidosis. You have alcoholic ketoacidosis, which we're not going to talk about in this presentation. You also have starvation ketoacidosis, which would occur, let's say, if you're really starving, not fasting, but starving, okay? And you're, you have no food and your body's eating up your own muscle and fat and you're very thin, like maybe even you have anorexia. So we're not going to even cover this because these two are completely different. We're going to talk about the diabetic ketoacidosis condition, okay? Mainly type one. You can get it with type two if you're taking a certain medication, uh, but it's rare, but type one, it's more common, okay? So let's talk about that. There's, there's about five, five abnormal things about uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. Number one, there's hyperglycemia. There's high levels of blood sugar, okay? Why? because the type one doesn't have any insulin. So let's say you forgot to take your insulin, sugar goes really, really, really high, okay? So the other characteristic is low insulin or no insulin. So we just have very high blood sugar. What's gonna happen is that's gonna drive a lot of electrolytes and fluid out of the body because you're peeing out glucose and wherever the glucose goes, the water goes and the electrolytes go. So you have low blood volume, okay? Low blood pressure, you're gonna feel weak. So this is another characteristic right here. You're gonna have major potassium loss, okay? Now, you're also gonna get acidosis, and this is the danger of diabetic ketoacidosis, is the acidosis part. Normally, the blood is between 7.35 and 7.45. It's slightly alkaline and a very tight, narrow band. So you have if you have a mild um, problem, it'll be between 7.25 and 7.3. You can see it's just slightly less than this. It's not drastically. A moderate problem would be 7 to 7.25, and a severe uh, acidosis would be below 7. It gets really dangerous. So this is really the danger of ketoacidosis, okay? Now, realize, too, that the potassium is alkaline, and that's supposed to buffer this condition, but there's loss of potassium, so we don't have those minerals, including we don't have magnesium either. So if you have this condition, you should go directly to the hospital, and they're going to give you an IV and start putting back in fluids and electrolytes, and then they'll gradually put in potassium, because if you don't want to add too much potassium too suddenly if you're completely in this situation, because it can affect the heart. But the point is that you need electrolytes, you need fluid. Now, this condition usually happens when you forget to take your insulin because if you don't have insulin, then the blood sugar goes high and things get out of control. If you have someone that tells you you shouldn't do keto uh, because you don't want to risk ketoacidosis, well, what should you do? Should you go back to carbs? Well, why would you do that? You have high blood sugar. Why would you want to add more carbohydrate to high sugar, that's gonna make it worse. And people will say, well, because they don't understand, they'll say, um, well, because if I add sugar, I'm gonna increase my insulin. Well, no, you're not. Not if you're a type one diabetic, you don't have any insulin. You're just gonna add sugar to a body that has too much sugar, you're gonna make things worse. So you don't wanna eat sugar if you um, have ketoacidosis or even want, if you wanna prevent it. Uh, it's really about, um, insulin because you really want to monitor your insulin and take just the amount to keep your sugars in check, okay? And realize the more sugar you have, the more insulin you're going to need. Um, and you want to always make sure, and this is why I recommend a healthy version of ketosis. It's called healthy keto. By consuming enough vegetables that are mineral dense, that are potassium rich and magnesium, so you have the electrolytes that you need to prevent this problem right here. Now, some of the symptoms of ketoacidosis are this thirst, uh, frequent urination, exhaustion, can't breathe that well. When you have acidosis, it's like it traps the air. Uh, confusion, dry mouth. So 
if you're doing healthy ketosis by cutting out carbs, you can see very uh, clearly that you're not going to start developing this condition because you're taking your electrolytes, you're, you're uh, making sure that your blood sugars are not too high because you're not eating sugar. Now you're bringing your insulin low, but you're not bringing it down to zero. Your body's still making it. It's just like you don't require as much because you're running on ketones. And so you don't need as much insulin, and that's a good thing. Uh, we need some, but we don't need excessive amounts. Now, I want to shift gears over here and talk about ketones, ketone testing. You can check your ketones with your urine or the blood. All right, so if you're testing things, and I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, millimoles per liter and BHP, which is beta-hydroxybutyrate. This is a type of ketone, and this is the units right here. So if you're measuring your urine, uh, normal ketones would be 0.6 or less. Beginner's keto, point, roughly around 0.6. Advanced, deeper keto, that would be 0.6 to 3. Starving, that would be between 3 and 5. Risk of diabetic ketoacidosis would be greater than 5. Then actual diabetic ketoacidosis is above 10, okay? I mean, look at the difference between like how many ketones versus what most people end up is this range right through in here. Okay, maybe even right up here too. So if you're in this range and you feel fine, I wouldn't even worry about it. Now, if you're checking your blood, um, it would be normal, it would be uh, like less than 0.6, beginning keto, 0.6 roughly, advanced keto, 0.6 to 1.5, and then starving, 1.5, and then risk of, it would be 1.5 to 3, and then Diabetic ketoacidosis is greater than three. So you can see that the values do change when you're checking in the blood. Now, the real big point about this video is I wanted just to clarify any confusion you had and also um, really talk to those type one diabetics. You don't wanna not check your blood sugars because you can actually not take enough insulin and create a problem. And these are the symptoms right here. But for everyone else, you know, now you can actually understand what your values are, and to make sure it doesn't get out of range. But again, you're not going to have to worry about it unless you're a type 1 or type 2 taking insulin and other medications. All right, guys. Talk to you later. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.